I'm very happy to have Scott Barrett here at the Express Views. Scott Barrett is a professor of natural resource economics at Columbia University in New York City. Good morning, Scott. How are good you morning. doing? <laughs> good morning. How are you? Everything is good. Scott, what is your favorite article in environmental economics? Well, of course, I love hundreds of articles, but you asked me to pick one. And the one that I think has been neglected that deserves more attention is William Nordhaus's paper from 1977 in the American Economic Review Papers and Proceedings, Economic Growth and uh, Climate, the Carbon Dioxide Problem. And it's an extraordinary little paper because it basically creates the foundations for what today we call the integrated assessment model. And it concludes with the question that has absorbed my professional life, which is how do we get the countries of the world to cooperate on this problem? So a, a great jewel written in 1976. Pretty amazing. And, and quoting a Nobel Prize can also never be wrong. No? <laughs> well, that's another reason for mentioning that paper. Which you heard, yes. <laughs> Um, what book should every environmental economist have read? Well, my favorite book by far in environmental economics is The Control of Resources by Partha Descapta. It's a beautiful book. That was published in 1982. And in that book, Partha shows how theory, simple theory, can explain very complex phenomena. It was the first book I read of environmental economics that incorporated game theory. And he does it in his own inimitable style. It's a tour de force. It's a remarkable book. And I wish it had a lot more attention. I think anyone who reads that book would choose to devote themselves to studying environmental economics as I did and making one of the great choices of my life, which was to study under him at the London School of Economics. With whom would you like? Like to write your next article and why? Uh, that's the easiest question. Uh, Astrid Denenberg, of course. So Astrid and I have written quite a few papers now. Uh, Astrid is a master at experimental economics, and I construct these little theories. And the reason I like to work with her is first because you want to know are the predictions of the theory likely to be borne out by how people play. That's a great thing to want to know. Second, some questions that are very important for us can't be answered by theory. I mean, some people might try to play with a the theory to, to beat an answer out of it, but I don't like that approach. We just go directly into the lab to find out. That I love. And the third reason I love to work with Astrid is she's just a lot of fun. <laughs> that should be the main reason to work with co-authors, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what is the major contribution of game theory and coalitions to environmental economics? I think the main contribution is to underline the importance of sovereignty. Because it's that constraint of sovereignty that explains why getting agreement on important issues is so difficult, sustaining agreements even harder. And I think anyone who neglects the importance of that one assumption in these models is overlooking the biggest reason for why the world has not come to grips with some great challenges. Of course, another part of the theory that's so wonderful is it can explain why there are exceptions to these rules. So the power of the theory is it can do both, but it really makes us pay very deep attention to sovereignty. Interesting answer. Uh, let's get personal. Do you buy carbon offsets when flying? I don't. And uh, I, I guess, you know, do I feel sheepish? Yeah, a little bit. But I think carbon dog, I, I think the carbon offsets, one thing I would say is that they're all about me and who I am and my virtues. And I don't see the problem quite that way. Uh, I can understand why other people might disagree with me, but for me, it's a problem of all of us. And I devote my 
resources and attention to the collective action problem uh, rather than just my own behavior. Egalitarianism, utilitarianism, equality of opportunity or libertarianism, what theory of justice would you prescribe to? Well, there's something appealing about all of them, of course. But I, you know, we, we, we use routinely, often without thinking too deeply about it, we use utilitarianism um, in economics, welfare economics. And I have come to believe more and more just how powerful that approach is. What I like about it is it's very democratic. We're going to count everyone the values that those people associate with choices. And I like the democratic nature of that concept. You are from the US after all? <laughs> <laughs> I am from the planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in God? No. President Donald Trump, good or bad for the USA? President Donald Trump is, as he would say in his own way, a disaster. <laughs> He's a disaster for the United States. He's a disaster for the world. And the reason for that really is that he has not only neglected but maligned the institutions that have provided prosperity, mutual understanding, recognition of human rights, the need for countries to cooperate. He has taken away inspiration for good. He has neglected completely. He is simply unable to understand the concept of a positive sum game. He is Mr. Zero Sum. Everything is a struggle. Everything is about opposition. And uh, I think he is a, a threat to all of us. Of course, one thing that's so worrying is not who he is as a person. It's that he was elected. The democratic system is flawed, of course. But nonetheless, he was elected. And uh, I also wish that he was only a U.S. phenomenon, but there are different versions of Donald Trump popping up in different parts of the world. And we're living through a very difficult time. And the last thing I would say is, as difficult as it's been for us to address issues like climate change in a world that was kind of reliably multi multinational, multilateral, um, now all of that becomes much, much harder. If you could spend one hour with a person of your choice, who would it be and why? There's someone who I, I mentioned in Partha Discapta, another person who had a very profound effect on me is Thomas Schelling. And Thomas Schelling had just a completely unique mind. And uh, I would love to spend time talking to him about the things that I'm working on that I don't understand. And also, I just like him, and I would enjoy being with him for now. Okay, Scott, please complete the following sentences. Game theory for me is... The foundation of all the social sciences, or should be. If I could turn back time, I would... Not do it. The study of environmental economics is... Powerful and useful, and we should use it for good purposes. Life on planet Earth in the year 2100 will be? Different. And if John Nash was still alive, then? We should invite him to give the keynote at the next World Congress. <laughs> Scott, thank you so much for your time. This was very interesting. <laughs> Thank you, Ingmar. It was a pleasure. <laughs>